finalization of the preliminary plans to create an epistemological basis for all parties to proceed to a mutually beneficial conservation, which will acknowledge and safeguard the vital interests of all participants without jeopardizing in any material way the underlying negative benefit of the group all signatures, or leaving unresolved certain anomalies and irregularities and might precipitate operational uncertainties down the line. So that there will be a consumed monitor of ironclad reciprocity, which in the broad scheme of things is to everyone's advantage. <laughs>
fact is, your, your, your sister Connie and I are about to get married. <laughs> she hasn't told me. Uh, that's probably because I, I haven't told her. <laughs> <laughs> but this is her last chance. It's ten years of courtship. Is carrying celibacy to the extremes. Poor <laughs> girl. And I thought that uh, before I embarked upon the, the choppy waters of the Vita Congardis, I'd better hit the old vessel of the hall. If I may stretch my metaphor. <laughs> oh, well, drop your trousers. <laughs> what for? The longer I practice medicine, the more convinced I am. There are only two types of cases, those that involve taking trousers off and those that don't. <laughs> I'm waiting. Well, I'm a little shy. <laughs> Why? No one's going to come in. Oh, 
Shakespeare's Hamlet. To be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, a chance to dream. Why, oh. there's the rub. <laughs> For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? must give us pause. Bears the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the presser's wrong, The proud man's contumely. Hands of despised love. The law's delay. <laughs> the insolence of office. These spurs, the patient merit of the worthy tent. When he himself could his quietest make with a fair body, who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no travel returns, puzzles the world and makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others that we may not offer. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly lower pale cast of the fall. And enterprises of great pith and moment, with this regard, their currents turn awry. And 
to stop the spread of COVID-19. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. No. 
in the East Bay, but we've got April, May, and June. Um, so we've got April is in my mistress' arms, which is a magical. We've got May. Um, now is the month of May. Um, and then we're going to start with um, that lovely song from Carousel, June is Busting Out the Road.
by all sorts of arrangements to keep men about it. Um, and this has <laughs> got some wonderful words. The words are by Robert Jordan. Do listen carefully to the words. Because, um, well, you'll see. I'm sure they'll enunciate them just before you. Um, the second song, uh, I'll tell you about that one also. Ah, yes, we are going to be talking about these very different voice parts. Oh, good hey. point. <laughs> Thank you. 
does for class what lumps do for custard. <laughs> anyway, do come along, Rita. It's going to be lovely. We've pulled out all the stops. No expense spared. There's a buffet. <laughs> That's French. I say, yes. So is nerd. <laughs> but then crap's crap in any language. <laughs> I think she regretted asking me for a moment. Tut tut, Rita, you your little jokes. <laughs> the ceremony was held upstairs above the pub where the bun fight, sorry, birthday, <laughs> was being held. There was this central aisle, and there were two aisles starting at either side of the back, making their way through the guests to merge together at the top. Unfortunately, that meant that we all had a good look at both of them. She wearing a too tight white frock, and he in a too large white trouser suit. Now I don't know if his teeth were his own, but his hair definitely wasn't. <laughs> now, someone tittered behind me to my right, and then a few others joined in. I didn't. Oh no. I was transfixed. I'd taken one look at that Rene and Renato moment when they met up at the front, and I was immediately transported back to 1982 and my own wedding to Malcolm. We both wore white trouser suits, as was fashionable in 1982. I don't know what I ever saw in him. Do you know, he used to insist on wearing his underpants when we made love. <laughs> yeah, not normal, is it? <laughs> in fact, his mother once confided in me. Rita, you do know that Malcolm only has one testicle, don't you? <laughs> well, I nearly replied he could have had a white rabbit down there for all I knew. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. Oh, it didn't last. Now, the best thing to come from that union were the twins. I was on the rebound, you see my first husband, the love of my life. Still love him now. <laughs> we met at school. We were just 17 when we married. Oh, we were like two peas in a pod. Shared everything. Neither of us knew much about bedroom athletics, but uh, I did not enjoy finding out. But then he changed. He looks great. Oh, he looked dreadful. I thought he was ill. And then he'd start to snap at me over little things, stupid things. And then one day, he punched me. Oh, I don't know who was more hurt or surprised. But then it all came pouring out, and in floods of tears, he explained everything. And the following day, he took me to meet Oliver. The reason for his torment, and who it transpired, turned out to be the love of his life. I was made of honour for both of them at their civil ceremony, and they, bless them, they are godparents to all my children. Oh, yes, more marriages followed Malcolm, another two. And children, four more. And then there were the in-between relationships, three. Okay, four if you're going to include that dick stick from Dagenham. <laughs> well, that's why I hate getting so much, if you must know. They remind me of all my failings, and each and every one of them came coursing, coursing back to me as I sat there and watched those two love struck dark beggars on the front exchanging rings and sucking each other's faces off. Jaded. That's what my other friend said later when we were having a drink at the reception. Well, just because you've had a bit of bad luck, Rita, doesn't mean you have a, a, a bit of bad luck. Okay, maybe a bit more bad luck than the rest of us, but that doesn't mean you have to lock your heart away altogether. She didn't understand. I told her, there's not much of my heart left. Mostly sticky tape and blue tack. And what there is, I fully intend to keep a hold of, thank you. But 
which was when what felt like a gallon of pale ale came gushing over my head like a tidal wave. What the blue air has spluttered? Get off, begging you. Oh, I am sorry, love, really I am. Said this voice, and our eyes just locked. Rita Fosdye? He asked as I stared at him with beer drinking off the end of my nose. It is, isn't it? Blimey, eh? Jimmy Mitchell. I haven't seen him since I was nine. We sat next to each other at Sunday school, and he used to carry my books and kiss my cheek. Well, I'd forgotten all about him. Just when I had declared myself a man free zone, <laughs> up pops Jimmy Mitchell. Bless him. Huh. Oh well, as they say, back in the saddle again. <laughs>
No. I think I'd rather not tell you. Why not? You might explain it away or not, perhaps. Oh, certainly not that.
and in green underwood we cover. Blossom by blossom, the spring begins. The fire is nearly out.
quite taken with Eric Whitaker's music. Um, and so he mentioned it to somebody at the Disney Studios. And subsequently, Eric Whitaker got, got a phone call from them to say they were going to, they wanted to do an animated version of the Seal Lullaby, which is a Rudyard Kipling story. So um, Whitaker was absolutely delighted. Rolled this one off straight away. He said it just sort of pulled out of him. His wife's a singer, she sang it, he played it. They sent it off to the studio. And he heard nothing. And he heard nothing. And he heard nothing. So in the end, he phoned them up. And the chap said, um, Oh, I'm really sorry. We've decided to do Kung Fu Panda instead. <laughs>